Hello and welcome to Halo RV, everybody. My name is Josh the RV Nerd, and behind us at 3,085 pounds dry weight, 3,500 pounds maximum weight after cargo, J Feather 17Z. Overall, this thing is in uh, great condition. The owners took great care of it. There's a thing going on with the floor, though, and we're going to spend like the first eight. Most of this video is actually talking about the floor, showing you what I discovered with it, and explaining about 10 different ways. I don't think it's really a major item but it's definitely the kind of thing that could give some people some pause for concern so we're gonna get that out of the way first the other thing I want to mention on this one I've seen it with this specific camper like most of the time uh, the, like a, a travel trailer there's not like a recurring like you gotta watch this one for that this floor plan specifically I've never been very comfortable with its fairly low cargo capacity You've got barely over 400 pounds of cargo capacity on this thing. By the time you put your propane and battery on the front, you've cut into that. Definitely don't want to be towing water in this thing whatsoever. You need to pack light. You're talking graham crackers and marshmallows in here. And you want to pack one pair of shorts instead of two. As long as you know what you're getting into in here, or if you utilize the storage space, like uh, let's say you've got a 4,500 pound tow package SUV or something like that. Pack as much of your cargo as you can in the vehicle and cross load it over here and then just try to keep this as light as possible, basically. That's my recommendation on this one. So here's the thing. I can tell you all about this and I can explain it. It is something I think you really need to experience in person to, to fully grasp here. And I mean, as you can see, first impressions, this thing, it, it just looks phenomenal. But as you walk around the floor, there's a couple spots where you feel soft flooring. But the thing is, this floor has done something I don't know that I've ever seen a laminated floor do before. Okay, so the only way I could really think to try to visibly demonstrate this on video for you is with a little bit of hand puppet theater over here. So a laminated floor, you, you take all these materials and you squish them together and they make a sandwich and they're supposed to, you know, stay like this over time. Um, whether the RV was, you know, bounced down the road a lot, which I mean, I'm really looking around here. This does not look like it was, this actually looks extremely well kept. The roof is in terrific shape, which tells me they really did a good job, but whether they, you know, bounced it hard down the road and occasionally went like that with it and, and notice my fingertips when you take, a finite amount of material and you arc it you see how my fingertips up top here kind of pop out a little bit you've broken a little bit of the bond the glue that holds between them you've stressed that a little bit now what I have often seen happen unfortunately on older laminated floors which when I say older I mean like only about five years old and older is from people walking on them in high stress areas over time they start to really buckle downward and you'll feel soft spots. It feels like a trampoline floor, you might hear me call it. That isn't what this feels like underfoot. The moment I stepped on it, I was like, this is this is different. And I had to really think about what I was stepping on. And I think what happened is I think the floor structure held. And I think the top Luan layer and the flooring, the lino that we're walking on, because the lino is glued to uh, a, a, a Luan layer that is then adhered to the block foam and uh, aluminum frame structure down here. This, I think, delaminated. I think the flooring popped up in certain areas off of the floor structure. You see delamination on an exterior sidewall. You don't usually see that on a floor. I think this is just an extreme fluke situation in which the glue failed and i've been doing this over a dozen years i can't think of another time i've walked on a floor that felt exactly like this and um <laughs> i don't know how well this shows up on camera but i wear my shoes out there's there i'm basically walking around here barefoot right now <laughs> and um I got a pretty good feel for what's happening here. I'm not walking on big, thick, padded stuff. Now, I get it. When you start hearing delamination, you start hearing any soft floor, you start hearing anything like that. It's an instant red flag, no thank you for a lot of people. Totally get it, totally respect it. That's why we took the time to go out of our way for three minutes here to try to explain what this is. That being said, um, 
I'm 200 five six seven eight nine pounds something like that the scale keeps on climbing because i just keep on eating you know it's a, it's a choice no one's making me do it i don't blame mcdonald's for making me eat the nuggets they're just delicious and i enjoy them and my daughter's like i want mcd's and i'm like i want some mcd's but <laughs> anyway you get the idea you know i thought you know all the hand puppets in the world don't amount to a hill of beans in comparison to a good old-fashioned demonstration. So to do that, I'm calling in the boys. Bruh. <laughs> yeah, that thing. So anyway, we've already, uh, previously before you guys were out here, we already established that thing. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tyler Shaver, uh, Mr. Big John McVicker, we call him tiny um we don't he would hurt us uh maybe not i don't know i think he's a gentle giant regardless um tyler yeah. how big are you six foot three 270 okay and john about six foot seven 360 pounds okay so between the two of us here we've got over 600 pounds of just twisted steel and sex appeal in this thing right anyway do me a favor uh i'm just gonna get some foot picks uh just walk around in here I just want people to get to see with, you know, the, the fact that the floor is not caving. Look at, yeah, bo both of you do the flamingo one leg stand right there, please. There you go. No, no sound effects, please. Good Lord. You notice how the floor is not buckling underneath them. John's bouncing over here like John Travolta at the beginning of Saturday Night Fever, which, by the way, was not actually John Travolta in the beginning of Saturday Night Fever, and he hated the bounce. You don't even know what I'm talking about, do you? What'd you have in your last Happy Meal, bud? <laughs> I'll cut that thing down. Although, I'll give the folks credit. It smells like cinnamon in here. Like, it's, it's a very pleasant experience being in here. And look around. Like, you see how there's not dirt and particulate all over? And again, you can see the flooring looks fine. It's not water damaged. It's not discolored. It's not stained. It's not molded. I think the glue for the top layering of that Luan just... Gave loose. Very, very uncommon kind of thing. Um, we've got a six and a half foot interior. We have uh, not centralized air, but a full 13,500 BTU air. It might mean that the bathroom gets a little bit warmer than everything else. Uh, and, and the double seat, actually the double seating and the, uh, the walk through to get up to the front bed, those right there were always like the really big, uh, exciting qualities on this floor plan when it first came out. Because the predecessor to this was called the 17C, which actually had a giant C-shaped, which we now call a U-dinette, all the way across the front. And you had to climb on your dinette to get up to bed, which nobody ever really enjoyed. Now, I'm operating a bit here from memory, but I believe that's a 60 by 80 queen up front and something like a 54 by 80 in the back, like roughly a full-size bed. And there's... Uh, three little Woody Woodpecker marks on the front here I want to point out to you. And I think what happened here is sometimes when people are putting up the uh, the support skeleton there, they'll take uh, the shepherd's hook right here and they'll just poke at it to get it up out of the way and sometimes you'll snag it. Now, from a distance, I spotted this immediately. But then as I got closer, I realized that these had been patched. So it's, it's not ideal that they're there, but it's also not an issue. Now, to avoid giving you Top Gun barrel roll sickness, I'm going to cut the video and flip upside down. We're going to be looking straight up toward the ceiling here. And not my most flattering angle, uh, admittedly. But you see that little mark right there? Um, <laughs> doing the uh, danger zone twist and turn here to get you this angle. Um, that, it... Like, it's lighter right there, but if you get right up close to it, you can see that it hasn't gone all the way through. So once again, I think what we're looking at there is a uh, a snag from just kind of being a little aggressive with the shepherd's hook, putting this thing up, maybe in a hurry or something like that. I don't know. I don't see where it's poked all the way through, but just to give you an idea, I, I try to look. Um, okay, I'm going to turn the camera so you don't get motion sick over here. Just spotted another one of these we're going to look at together. There. Same kind of thing. It's not poked through. It's just there. I don't think it's a problem, but I'm not the one buying it. You guys make your own decisions. I'm just giving you the information and the tools to do it. 
One of the other nice things about this one is that it is carpetless and both the sofa and dinette can fold down into beds. That's actually what's cool about this one. I mean, this is tiny little camper and the none of the sleeping really eats up the floor plan, but you could convert this into a very significant like multi-sleeper kind of situation if needed. One of the other more surprising aspects of it is it has some pretty decent storage capacity. The cabinetry is pocket screwed, so I'm really not at all worried about that. Even if you're, you know, you, you rattle trap this thing down the road, she's going to hold together. I, you know, I like to look up inside of places like that where people aggressive with their dishes. Did they leave a bunch of loose stuff banging around? This looks to have been very, very well kept. Uh, like I said, I don't think the owner's failed on the flooring i think the flooring failed on the owners if that uh makes any sense to you um one other thing here is above that five cubic foot refrigerator there is in the top section of that a separate freezer pocket so it is a fridge and freezer it is gas electric and two-way but that is also going to be our little uh tv hookup area and if i get this uh door with the smoky glass window out of the way you see that we have our uh bluetooth dvd stereo system there as well and I see that, I'm guessing they did have a TV there because somebody actually ran the HDMI wire, which from the factory, that wouldn't have been there. And the bathroom is what I'm going to call simple but effective. It is small. It is fairly tight. One of the nice things about this one, though, having a shower curtain is it's going to mean a little bit more elbow room for you, which is nice. Uh, there is enough room to, like, stand up and get dressed when you get out of the shower, although... That is a small corner shower. When you get wet, that shower curtain is going to be sticking to you a little bit. And if you're taller like me, your head's going to be in that skylight when you're showering. But the fact is, it's a little camper. And if you need to, you can get yourself through a weekend here. Um, beyond that, uh, all we really have left back here is just the uh, the rear bed, which is kind of just a replay of what we saw up front. Although, I will admit, I haven't examined the bed end on this one like I did the front and I'm not seeing any sort of concerning little snag spots like I did on the front. Um, that isn't necessarily uncommon. There's a lot of people who are couples who will buy a camper like this who just never use the rear bed, so it doesn't tend to get put up and down as often. I don't know if that's what happened here. I'm just sharing. Now, I like to close things up and show them in what I call road mode. Usually that means with slide outs, but in this case, I think it just means kind of displaying stuff with the beds closed. Now, I don't always do this with hybrids because I think it's pretty self-explanatory that when the beds are closed, you realize that you can get to everything except for the beds. But if I don't show it, people say they want to see it. And I don't know, it's another 25 seconds of my life. No big deal. Hope you enjoy. Now, when we were inside, we saw a couple little snags on the uh, the front inside little tent screen wall that can drop down there. If you, That's another cool thing about hybrids. If you want just amazing light and airflow and visibility, those uh, bed ends have zip down panels. You can see all the way around this thing. Um, but what I was getting at is you can see how from the outside, there's no signature of any of that. There's no like holes poked through it. It's not moldy. It hasn't been put away when it was wet. This has been from the previous owners, extremely well maintained. I have to believe this is actually stored like inside somewhere because the gleam on the skin is just fantastic. Uh, down here, uh, you've got the double propane tanks. A lot of hybrids in a single axle like this, they're really, really budget focused. You'll see a lot of things with a, a single propane tank and uh, no auto changeover regulator like this. And down below, you're looking at about $500 a hitching included, compliments to the previous owners. I don't know what they swapped up to. I only know that uh, that hitch apparently was no longer of any use to them, uh, essentially. Now, working our way down here, we uh, a couple nice details. A full outside utility shower and a black tank flush. The tires look good. I peeked at the date code on these. Uh, these were born in the 23rd week of the 16th year of the 2000 millennium, basically. So, uh, 23rd week of 2016. That means those tires are a little over five years old. Uh, there's a lot of people that would say if uh, you plan to do any towing, you should really get those tires replaced at this stage. That's the funny thing about RV tires. They don't tend to wear out. They're going to age out. If you've worn out a tire, it's because you've severely overloaded it. Now, I mentioned how this one had uh, a little bit of a concern with cargo capacity, and I just mentioned how you could overload it and wear out the tires. So, allow me to, let me get a good angle at it here. 
Allow me to demonstrate the fact that the tires on this have not been overloaded and, and have not been wore out. Now, as long as we're uh, looking at stuff down here, let me swing you over to get a little look at the propane cooker hooker off a side of this. And then if we Mario jump up top, we've got ourselves a, a little look at the, uh, the roof here. And that is as spick and span as you could ever hope any newer used RV roof to be. The seals look fantastic. The front rear termination strips look good. Again, I'm pretty confident this was stored like inside a barn or a garage or something when it wasn't being used. So there you have it, folks. The good, the bad, the ugly with everything in between. If you appreciate the fair look we give you at these things, if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button. Click that little like button on the video if you don't have anything else to add. Uh, it doesn't cost you nothing. It does help spread the word a little bit. So as always, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.